pound on track for big monthly fall ahead of budget. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Ludovica Vignola. The pound was on track for its biggest monthly fall since September 2023 against the dollar, while being roughly unchanged versus the euro, with markets focused on major central banks' monetary easing parts. Markets are now looking ahead to the UK budget on Wednesday. Well, will this change the outlook for sterling? To help answer all that and more, I am joined by Jane Foley, head of FX strategy at Rabobank. Pleasure having you here on the program with us. So, Jane, as you say in your notes, uh, Chancellor Reeves is now walking a very thin line, right, seeking to find the right balance between finding the funds to invest while maintaining a sort of air of prudence when it comes to the budget. And we remember really well what happened uh, with List Trust now two years ago in the response of the bond market. However, you say that sterling has been holding up quite well so far. So why is that? Well, considering uh, the size, the importance of this budget, sterling has been doing quite well. In fact, it is still the best performing G10 currency in the year to date, although it has slipped down the ranks just a little bit uh, in the month to date. And of course, the big performer in the month to date has been the US dollar as the markets pared back expectations about the amount of Fed interest rate cuts that it deems are necessary in the still resilient US economy. So that's why sterling has been battling uh, against the dollar, really, this month. It's related to dollar strength. Nevertheless, a few digits are certainly ahead of this budget, but nothing like the sort of uh, fear that we saw in the market after Liz Truss announced that budget uh, two years ago. And of course, uh, that has taught politicians perhaps how to handle uh, the markets. And a lot of the news uh, about uh, Liz Truss, uh, about Rachel Reeves' budget this week has already been announced. So we know that there will be uh, a change for instance, uh, in uh, the deficit rule. Uh, the market perhaps uh, been told that before at uh, the big date of the budget to avoid uh, some of the, 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 the nervousness uh, that could potentially happen on news like that otherwise. Mm, right. The euro sterling is edging lower right now. And of course, we will have to see what will happen in the next uh, ECB meeting. You do say, though, that you expect the euro sterling to continue edging lower. And that's despite potential risks of fiscal policy settings in the UK as well. Can you help us understand why? Well, yes. I mean, we certainly do have uh, some volatility uh, possible around the UK budget. And, uh, but if we look at the other side of the, the channel, for instance, if you look at the budget issues in France, well, they're really quite uh, significant right now. We've had uh, a, a few warnings from credit rating agencies over the last uh, fortnight or so, uh, warning about uh, the, the French budget. But then, of course, if we switch to Germany, I think what we've seen in, in Germany uh, in the last year or two is a number of structural issues really facing uh, Germany. Clearly, uh, German exporters facing still a, a weak uh, China. Uh, of course, for German industrialists, uh, they no longer have that source of cheap Russian energy. And of course, the labour market pool has also uh, been uh, considerably tighter. But but of course, the, res the, the euro has been pretty resilient despite that back Ground this year. But again, it's losing uh, some of its resilience recently. And that's probably because uh, the market is now expecting that the ECB may be able to cut interest rates at a, a far faster clip. In fact, the market is anticipating that there could even be a 50 basis points interest rate cut from the ECB in December. And that, I think, would probably expose uh, the euro to some of these fundamental issues in the eurozone economy. Right, and we'll get to that point again uh, on the on the ECB. But investors now tend to think that the Bank of England is not as dovish as other central banks. But do you think this is fully reflected in the fundamentals of the economy in the UK? Or could something change in the next few months? Where are the main risks? Well, of course, I think we do have to talk about that services sector inflation. Now, it is coming down, but at the last reading, it was 4.9% year on year. Of course, that's nothing like 2% where the Bank of England would like it to be. Uh, so this is an issue that, of course, reflects 
what we are a services sector economy in the UK, but certainly it reflects still tight labour market conditions in the UK. Now, I think what the Bank of England would like to see was more deceleration in that headline number for services sector inflation. And I think from our point of view here at Rabobank, uh, until we see that, until, until we are more confident about services sector inflation uh, cooling down faster, well, it, it's quite likely that the Bank of England could just maintain that deliberate pace of just quarterly interest rate cuts, which, of course, um, is a lot slower than the ECB and potentially the Fed. As we know, public debt in the UK has now reached 98.5 percent of GDP at the end of September 2024. Now, that's the highest since the early 1960 uh, after the Second World War, essentially. How do you think uh, Chancellor Reeves should try and calm concerns about uh, borrowing or should she rather focus on, on growth, for example? Well, I think what the message that the Labour Party has been trying to get across, uh, certainly in the last few weeks, but actually into the election campaign even, is that well, the UK economy needs growth. And in order to get growth, really, we need to increase our productivity. And in order to do that, well, we need to invest. But of course, the problem is, as you just described, the dire position of UK public finances. So the message that we've heard recently, particularly from PM Starmer, is that it's okay to borrow if that money is going to be used for investment and, and therefore growth. Now, uh, that's his take. I think the final judge on that will, of course, be at the gilts market. But once we saw the gilts market perhaps a little bit rattled last week, uh, certainly there's been no signs of, of panic. So that message to date has been absorbed by the market. Now, of course, uh, we do know in the budget there will also be uh, tax increases, spending cuts. And the way that the Labour government has tried to describe what's happening in, in terms of public finances is that those tax hikes will be used for day-to-day -day expenditure, uh, but also the, the increase in borrowing will be used for investment. Now, of course, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I think if the government is unsuccessful in pushing growth higher, um, well, quite simply, it's unlikely to, to earn another term at the next UK election. Very, very interesting. Jane Foley from Rabobank, thank you for being with us today. And that is your Market Insight. Don't forget, you can watch more videos on Reuters.com.